Hello everyone, welcome to the virtual IT learning. In this video, we will learn how to manipulate the files in Linux Unix environment. Following are the commands that we will discuss in this video. Let's get started. We will first start with ls command that is used to list the files. There are various parameters that you can use with ls command. For example, all parameter is to display the long format file types, permissions, honor, group, size, date, and file name. A parameter is used to list all the files including hidden files. R parameter is used to recursively list subdirectories. T parameter is used to sort the list of files by file update time. H is used to display the file sizes in human readable format like in MBs and GBs and R parameter is used to display list in reverse order by the file update timestamp while sorting. You can merge more than one parameters together like this to combine the required result. For example, to display the long list of files, sort them by update time and then sort them in reverse order, you can use ls, l, t and r parameters. Same result, uh, when you use h parameter, it will return you the same result but size should be displayed in human readable format, for example in MBs and RGBs. Next is the touch command. The touch command is used to create an empty file. When we use this command on an existing file or directory, it will change the timestamp of files. For example, to create a new empty file like abc.txt, we can see that new file has been created. This file is an empty. And if we want to change the timestamp of an existing file then we can use touch let's put this name here now if we list this file here we should see the current timestamp of this file so this file will not change the contents of the file but it will only change the file create date timestamp so this command will not change the content of the file but when we use touch command for an existing file or directory, it will only change the timestamp of the file. Next is the cp command. The cp command is used to copy files and directories. It can be used to copy a single file or directory or multiple files or directories to a different file or directory. The syntax is copy source files to destination file. This is the general syntax. We will see a few examples now. So for example, if you want to copy the contents of this file to a new file called myfile3.txt, we can use this command and the new file name here. So this command will copy my file two.txt from source file to a new my file three dot text file. If the new file uh, which is my file three in this case doesn't exist, it will create the new file. If it already exists, it will get overwritten with my file two dot text file. Same as previous command, but if you want to uh, display a prompt uh, before replacing the file in case the file already exists then you can use i parameter so in this case if destination file already exists it will prompt you before overwriting that file Press yes and it will get overwritten now if you want to copy the contents of a file into a different directory or inside a directory so for example if you want to copy this file into this directory which is an existing directory we can use the command put the directory name here 
So in this case, this file will get copied into this directory. Let's check this. So we can see that by using this command, my file 3 file has been copied into the Tomcat directory. We can see that my file 3 was copied to this directory with the current timestamp. If you want to preserve the file attributes such as ownership, group ID, permissions, last modified timestamp and mode, you can use p parameter with the copy command. So for example, if we go back to one level up, so for example, if you want to copy this file into the Tomcat directory while preserving all the file attributes, we can use the cp command with p parameter. Now we can see using the p parameter, the file was copied into the destination directory while preserving all the original attributes. Now, if you want to copy a file into the current directory, for example, if you want to copy katina.out file from tomcat directory into this directory, so using this command, we can put the directory path here along with the file name. And then at the end, we can use the dot. The dot at the end of the cp command refer to the current directory. So in this case, katina.out file from this directory is should be copied into the current directory. Let's see. So that file has been copied. We can see the timestamp also got changed because we did not use the p parameter. Next is the move command. MV and move command is used to move or rename the files and directories in Linux Unix environment. To rename a file, it is used like this mv file name 1, which is the source file, to file name 2, which is the destination file name. To move files and a directories to a different directory, you can use file name to the destination directory. We will begin with renaming a file. So for example, if you want to rename this file from abc.txt to a new file called xyz.txt, we can use this syntax abc xyz. So this file, we can see it got renamed to xyz.txt. If xyz.txt doesn't exist, then abc.txt is renamed to xyz.txt. If xyz.txt exists, it will get overwritten or replaced with the contents of the abc.txt. Like the cp command, we can use i parameter which should display a prompt before overwriting an already existing file. So for example, if you reverse this example like this, now we have both files. Now we're using i parameter, so it should display a prompt before overwriting the xyz.txt, which already exists. Okay. If you type yes, it should get overwritten with the contents of abc file. Using the move command, we can also rename a directory. So for example, if you want to rename tomcat directory to tomcat new, so it will rename the directory from tomcat to new, a new name called tomcat underscore new directory. Please note the cp command doesn't carry the file or directory permissions. Permissions are only carried over when move command is used, but not the copy command. Next is the rm command. The rm command removes or deletes files and directories. The general syntax is rm file or directory. 
It can also be used to delete directories using R parameter to recursively delete all directories. So for example, if you want to remove this file, just use rm with the file name, type yes, and this will remove imply.csv file. Same way, if you want to remove a directory recursively, meaning that deleting a directory along with all of its contents and subdirectories, we can use rm r parameter which stands for recursive delete and then we can put the directory name here and if you don't want to show any prompt before deleting the directory or uh, forcibly are uh, deleting the directory forcibly then we can use f parameter here and it will directly delete this tomcat directory along with all of its subdirectories and content and contents so now it has deleted the tomcat directory we can see the Tom character is not there anymore. Now we will discuss few other commands like how to make a directory and how to remove a directory using a different command like rmdir. So in order to make a directory we use mkdir command. mkdir command stands for make directory. So for example in this case we can create a new directory tomcat. So this directory has been created. rmdir command is used to delete a directory which is empty. So when a directory is empty, we can directly use rmdir command. So we can see directory is gone. Now let's recreate the directory. Now let's copy this file into the tomcat directory. Now that directory is not empty. If you use rmdir command for a directory which is not empty, it will not delete the file. It will show you an error message like directory is not empty. Since rmdir deletes only in an empty directory, if you want to remove a directory with all of its contents, you can use the r option like, like we used previously like rm r and tomcat. So in this case the directory will be removed with all of its contents. So again if you don't want to see all of these uh, prompt messages we can use f parameter to forcibly delete that directory as we used previously. Thank you for watching this video.